is still here today. Um, it's all about him and it's all in him. And we thank him in all things, no matter what we go through in life. Jesus is Lord. The Lord is in heaven and he rules over the affairs of men and has not given it over to men. So having this in mind, we are confident that it's only the will of God will be done. So this morning we will continue with our teaching on the parables and we will look at the parable of the young rich man or the rich man some said the rich fool but let's pray father we thank you this morning and we bless you for your goodness and your mercy we ask you speak to us minister to our spirit soul and body through this word that all of us will learn a great lesson in yeshua jesus name we pray amen and amen so we look at the book of luke chapter 12 and then from verse 16 the bible says and he spake a parable unto them saying the ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall i do because i have no room where to bestow my fruits and he said this will i do i will pull down my bands and build greater and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he, is he that layeth up treasure for himself and not rich towards God. Anyway, if we um, look at verse 15, the Bible says there, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the of the things which he possesses, because someone came and said to him, "Oh, can you divide um, the inheritance, the possessions, and then um, between myself and my brother?" And Jesus says, "Who made me a judge over or a divider over you?" That was how the conversation started over mundane things, over who owns, over the land, over the cars, over the properties, over the inheritance. And brother, this is a snare, very big snare, inheritance. And if you look at families today who had been together, siblings who had been there for each other, at the end of the day, what separates them most times is inheritance inheritance inherited from parents and then things um, passed on to parents who is mine i can't leave it and all that may the lord open our eyes to let go after this parable now let's then jesus said to them because i think um they were like no it's the right thing to do why not divide why not do this he said to them the life of man does not consist in the abundance of things which he possesses. And I'm sure all these people who hype prosperity on their pews will never talk about this scripture. No, you cannot hear them talk about this parable. Check through all their videos for one year, two, five, six years. And that tells you when people hide some aspect of the scriptures and hype the others, you know they are false prophets. They're not real. They wouldn't talk about this. Some Christians who had been born again for the past 10 years, probably this teaching will be the first. What do we see these days? People saying, wow, is that written in the Bible? I didn't know it's there. So how can one be born again for years and you don't know certain things written in the Bible? Anyway, this morning we are here. Let him that have ear to hear, get it. So what are we going to see here? Key things Elohim mentioned. It says a ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully and he 
thought within himself saying what shall i do he thought within himself that was himself he didn't ask the lord the creator of heaven and earth he didn't talk about he who made the summer the winter and the springtime and the harvest he didn't he didn't talk about he who gives seed to the sower and cause it rain and the sunshine he didn't talk about the great physicist the great chemist the great agriculturist the great, he didn't talk about him it's all about him and what he can do so let's note that he is talking about himself he thought within himself what shall i do because i have no room where to bestow my fruits so the economics out there or those who are into management or projects out there my wonder says what is the problem with planning is planning not the right thing to do is planning not good but let's see what is about this planning so he went and says i will do it pull down this plan do this calculate how much do i have it is this five-year plan my trajectory what i will achieve you know we have two-year plan five-year plan ten-year plan and then all these years i'm 55 now i know so many years ago 20 years ago there are some trajectories oh by i remember then in 2010 we had a trajectory by 2015 five-year plan it looks like it's the end of the world it, we wouldn't get there 2015 is bygone by then i remember there's another trajectory by 2020 and it looks like wow and by 2025 and all those things are laid out what should be done how much money to save how much to do how many employees to come and all those things by 2022 um coronavirus hit the world disorganized everywhere and not just even even now with wars and rumors of wars going on it's instability all over telling us that we can only do as much as we can but beyond that is beyond any human being i pray the lord will humble human beings to know that they are but men men this is one of the key things we we'll learned this morning that we are but men, men. When we're doing things just as the Bible advised us, we should say, by the grace of God. Even in the morning, by the grace of God. Because the Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for you do not know what tomorrow will bring forth. So we grew up to see this in everyday life and then people planning and all those things. And then it's okay to point fingers at this young man or at this rich fool as we may call him using the word fool because the Bible says that thou fool. But let's see if this had caught us or is still catching up with or is still catching us. Um, we have plans for our future decisions we want to apply and we've put every prudence, every diligence. We've done it with the experts. We can look at the, um, do some, what do you call it now? Look into the future, look at where we've been and done in the past and use that to traject what we what will be in future. The lessons here are to remind us to be careful, watch your heart, the transient nature of life and not reach towards God, not at all. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 15, the Bible says of Jeshurun, he waxed fat and forgot the God of his salvation. And that also happened to Solomon in the first book of first, um, Kings 11.4. It also happened to Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel 4.30 and Belshazzar in Daniel 5.20. At least these are the ones written in the Bible. Those who thought life is in their hands, they could do what they want. Oh, and people raise up to call them God. This is a lesson to anyone who is making himself a God. There is a God in heaven who rules over the affairs of men. It's just that men are stiff-necked. It's just that we are blind, we don't see. It's just that men don't learn. They do not learn. 
If men learn, we would have put ourselves where we belong. But because we don't learn, men will rise up and become a god. Nebuchadnezzar grew feathers all over him. Belshazzar saw a handwriting written on the wall, many, many tekel of a sin. You are weighed and found wanting. Herod fell. Before they could get down to pick him up, worms ate him up. That is man who is lofty, who prides himself. So pride, the self-confidence, the boasting, the conceit, the Bible says in Proverbs 132, For the turning away of the simple shall slay him, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. History. If you've read history, even in our own times, men who have risen, where are they today? Where are they? Kingdoms that have risen, where are they today? All gone is now history. Knowing that we are here for a while, knowing that we are here just for a little time, nobody is here forever, men ought to know, but Satan blinds and hardens people's hearts, preparing them for the hottest part of hell. May we learn. In Isaiah 51, 13, it says, And forgettest the Lord thy maker that had stretched for the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth, and had feared continually every day because of the fury of the oppressor, as if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? That is the question. Where? Everybody fearing the oppressor, his fury. The Bible says, where is it? It will go away men may have plants they did and then they had plants before the world was destroyed in the first instance then came water and took away everything the man bible says he thought in his heart proverbs 19 21 the bible says there there are or there may be devices in man's heart but it's still God's counsel that we stand. Man may devise all the things. I will do this, I'll build me a new barn, I'll pull it down, I will destroy, I will do this, I'm powerful, I'm this, I'm that. Oh, bow down, worship me, do this. It's all man. Man. May the Lord have mercy on man. Jeremiah 22, 13 and 14 says, Woe well, unto him that builds his house on unrighteousness. The man that built his house on unrighteousness. And he says, now I will pull him down. The Bible wonders of riches in the book of James. If we would take care. So he's accumulated so much. Accumulated so much. He built himself so much. He's got all that told himself, you cannot die anymore. You will live forever. What you have put for yourself. That's, you know, when you see people doing that, you see a sign of weakness. Because they don't want to go. They don't want to face reality. It's when you don't want to face reality, you start doing some funny things. Like this man, he was so self-confident. And the Bible made it clear that the riches will grow wind <laughs> and do what? Fly away. Proverbs 23, 5. Riches make themselves wings and fly away as ego to heaven. They fly. They go. Ecclesiastes 2, 18. I hated all my labor under the sun, for I will leave it for the man after me who I don't know. <laughs> when you read this, the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, it's wonderful. I think that should put sense into man. But because men do not acknowledge God, this wisdom is what hidden, really hidden. Isaiah 47, 8 says, Therefore hear now these, thou art Thou art given to pleasures that dwell carelessly, that say it in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know loss of children. Mm. Say here now, you that says, 
Ah, there is none beside me. It will fizzle away. Let's look at this beautiful passage in where we've read Ecclesiastes 2. Let's read the whole from 17 to 26. Everybody read along with me. It says, Therefore I hate a life. Because the works that is wrought under the sun is grievous to me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. Because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? Yet shall he have rule over my all my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have showed myself wise under the sun. This is vanity. Vanity, accumulation of wealth, power unto man is all vanity. Man that a tiny virus will eat up, consume. Just a noxious chemical takes you off. Ordinary sickness and the man that will expire. It doesn't matter the best technologies and medical practice. The day you expire, you will just crumble and close your eyes and move. So why? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why live we as if none? And look at this. People now know that these all are vanity. All they've toyed and things. That's why um, some, um, what do you call it now? Some research was done a few years back where there are no more, not as much marriages. They realized that parents are not happy with the choices of their children in marriage. So they would tell their children, their girls, if you marry this man, I will not give you my inheritance. But if you do not marry him, then you can have. Because I don't want him. All my toiling, all my hard work, all my traveling, all the risk I've taken for this man to take it. So what happens? The young lady will say, but I'll marry this man. So they carry on to live as partners without marriage. So that if there's a breakup or anything happens, all her father's then will still remain with her and her children. Vanity vanity therefore i went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which i have to take i've took under the sun for there is a man whose labor is in wisdom and in knowledge and in equity yet to a man that had not labored therein shall he leave it to his for his portion this also is vanity and great evil for what had man of all his labor and of the vexation of his heart wherein he had labored under the sun going out early spending time sick some have got arthritis because of farming some in their legs some have got some thrombosis for standing long hours some huge and a lot of occupational hazards to put food in the mouth and at the end of the day that's it. For all his days are sorrows and his um, travel grief, yea, his heart taketh no rest in the night. This is vanity. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw, that it was it was from the hand of God, for who can eat, or who else can hasten hereunto more than I? For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travel, to gather and to heap up, that he may give to him that is good before God. This is also vanity and vexation of the spirit. Psalm 90.10, the Bible says, The days of your years are three score years and ten. And if by any reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for is soon cut off and fly away. Is that why you are doing what you are doing? Drinking the blood of others? Slitting them in two with knife? Perpetrating hardship on them? 
creating false economy amassing all the wealth to yourself you can only sleep in one room you can only eat one plate of food probably those who are my age and more now to finish a bowl of food is a struggle vanity vestation of spirit vestation of spirit Psalm 102, 25 and 26. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hand. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. I hope we're learning this morning so that whatever you're clutching at, may the Lord open your eyes to see. Brethren, to put things in their rightful place so that we can. A lot of Christians are not moving forward because of the things they've got. They're clutching at nothing. Only one night the thief will come, everything will be gone. Vanity. The next morning, the life is not there anymore. Vanity. In the grave, do you know what has happened to all the things you toyed that hindered you, what you were going for, and on the last day, you wouldn't meet it. Life is more than meat, brethren. That's why the Bible says in Proverbs 23, 1 and 2, when you eat with a ruler, be diligent. What is set before you, be very careful. Life is more precious. Jesus says, is your life not more what more than sparrows? Why take your thought? Why look into these things? Forget about them. Tomorrow will take care of itself. This man was worrying about tomorrow. And Jesus says, don't worry. It, tomorrow we look after Matthew chapter 10 says don't fear take no thought Matthew 7 again God is still able to do what he can do he is still there for us if you look up to him and stop worrying he will take care he took care of Elijah he took care of the widow he took care of um, the multitude. He will still take care of all of us. And all he's saying, do not worry. So brethren, what are we going to look at this? Accumulating anything will be disappointing. Very. The Bible has a lot we can read. And then we look at the transient nature of man's life. Power. What are the things he said to himself mm, in my heart? I will pull down my ban. I've got enough. I have enough, more than enough to destroy the world and I can do it. I have all the powers. Vanity. I've got me a lot of food. I can hoard it. I will not give it out. That's not true it's not given to you are created like any other person oh i've got me power at church therefore none is as anointed as i am that's not true there's not one prophet only on earth and can never be god has got the remnants innumerable so he's not only used the prophet you can't just be the only teacher. There are many. So if you think you can keep back what you have and then the people cannot give, if you don't, the Lord says he will raise stones. So not one person. So it's pride and Satan that puts man into such. So what do we do? Watch yourself. Be very careful. Power. The wicked seek it and will not find it in Psalm 37, 35 and 36 because it's not given to man. It's transient. We've seen in all our history, one king comes and go. One ruler comes and go. One popular person comes and go. And even in our lives, my great-grandparents have come and they are gone. My grandparents have come and they are gone. My dad, gone. We will all go. Transit life. As we've read in some 90 days of man numbered. Material things, they will perish. Utterly perish. Material things will go. 
the Bible says all these things will go. Pleasure will go. Luke 12, 19 to 20. And then we all know what the Bible says that she that liveth in pleasure while she is still alive is dead. Of course, that one is dead. If you pride yourself with all the pleasure, wanting, drinking, posing, doing all those things, celebrating yourself, you've arrived. Vanity. So, whether anything, even in knowledge, First Corinthians chapter 13, says whether knowledge or this, they shall all fail. The only thing that will stand is charity, love, the orders, knowledge, prophecy, everything fell. There we go. Glory will also go. The glory of man. First Peter chapter 1 verse 24, the Bible says, for we all are like grass. Grass. That's it. So, if this man had known this and a lesson for all of us, when we talk, what did the Bible say? If God wills, by the grace of God, we shall see more. We shall do this because it is still all in his hands. All in his hands. And here the Bible says not, not rich towards the things of God. He wasn't rich. He says, but he, he was rich towards himself. He accumulated the wealth towards himself. He wasn't sharing with the brethren. He doesn't come to the things of the Lord. The brethren over our years, Apostle and I can tell you, brethren who hoard their things, one problem or the other will hit them. And they will use all those money to sort those things out. If no problem hit them to, sh sh um, to sort it out, foolishness will hit them. <laughs> and they will use those money to do what? Gratify sin. And the things that shouldn't. Because they didn't give it to God. Look, if you don't give it to the Lord, it will be taken. Tomorrow you will be no more. It may be donated to dog trust. It may be donated to climate change. It may be donated to one thing or the other. That means nothing. All your labors gone. Labor gone. Revelation 3, 17. Because thou sayest I am rich and increase it with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. This is loaded. You can pick up any of them to, to, to write a, a full book. Wretched. The man who is boastful is wretched. The man who is arrogant is wretched. Miserable. Because wealth and money cannot satisfy. If you put your hope in the riches, the Bible says they will fly away. What still if it is a man? Bible says, woe unto that person who put his trust on man. So did you put your trust on man? What man can do for you? What man cannot? Because that's where we are in our world today. We've grown so much in technology that we say there is no God. And we trusted in the things which we made and not in who he who made us that's terrible it means that the world is wretched the money the world is poor extremely poor poor in understanding poor and wretched to say wretched you know what it means i'm blind very blind that you can't see a lot of people are blind now they can't even see the time and season we're in it and every day things are happening but they allow their riches they allow wealth they allow the pursuit of mundane things to keep them blind and he's naked naked because there's nothing to cover the sin not at all Deuteronomy 6, 12 and 13. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells digged, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not. When thou shalt have eaten and be full beware lest thou forget the lord 
which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Beware. He's taking us out from sin into salvation, giving us his only begotten son to shed his blood to us. He's taking our names away from the book of hell, written it in into the book of life. He's giving us liberty and grace. Do we go back again? We've now eaten and we are full. He's blessed us with the sun, with the moon and everything. What is going on? Look at the whole world we are. Even with all the troubles, the sun is still out there. The wind is still blessing people. Some places it's still raining. And some places they, they're enjoying summer out after the cold. Not yet summer, is still spring. But then, look at the good thing God has done. Yet, man had forgotten who our God is. We will all give account of whatsoever. The man didn't know. He wasn't rich towards God. He wasn't rich towards the things of the Lord. He didn't plow back that money in evangelism, in helping the church to stand. He used it to do other things he thought in his heart is the right thing, but not bringing a soul to the Lord, not making room for the gospel. Don't. He wasn't rich in the things of Elohim. He was all about himself. Are you the selfish sister, selfish brother who thinks about yourself? Or you're reacting to your poverty. You know a lot of people react to their poverty. So because they didn't have, so when it now come is the time to now use it on yourself, on your people, on your this, on your that, on your this. Suddenly you are reacting. Remember, it wasn't given to you to do is still according to the will of God. So we could see here this rich fool was prideful. He trusted in himself, trusted in his ambition, trusted in his planning. Actually, he owns tomorrow. So he planned into tomorrow and decided what to do. Have you planned into tomorrow? Decided what to do? Have you said you will do this, you will do that and boasted yourself? Be careful. This is a humbling message to each and every one of us. Even while you're planning tomorrow, say, by God's grace, if the will of God, I'll see you tomorrow. By the grace of God, we will go to the U.S. We will do this. We will do that. It's all Him. All the plan. Please don't have plan Elohim. Don't allow your heart to be so much in suffering that you will forget he who had made us. That's the warning this morning. And also to warn us that we are like flower. In the morning, we are blooming. In the afternoon, we are gone. We are just like grasses. In the morning, we are there. Men put into the oven, it is gone. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for you do not know what tomorrow will bring about. And most importantly, think about being rich towards God. Lay up your treasures up in heaven. Be active. It may not necessarily be money. It may be your talent. It may be your time. A lot of people take away their time from the Lord. From They don't participate. They don't weigh in. They don't help to spread the gospel across. They don't visit. They keep back all they have and you reach towards yourself you pick up jobs two jobs you work from morning till night so that you don't have time to participate in the things of the lord you walk in the morning you walk in the night you walk in the day so that anytime we call you you said no i'm at work that is fine vanity to fizzle away you are not rich towards god you block out all your times. The remaining times is for your activities and recreation, not a single minute. And those of us who are doing complaining and complaining, not rich towards God. Who will you leave all these things for? Still vanity. This iPad, just to serve. This dress, <laughs> I tell you, all that we've put on the wardrobe. I, I've not seen anyone who died and we put all the dresses on them and they bury them. Not even one. They'll go and sew one flimsy white thing and cover you up and off. That is if you have the privilege to be buried. What of those who died on the sea? Those who were eaten up by animals? Those who are dying right now at the war front? What has happened? 
is a lesson, transient nature of man. Let's put our faith in the Lord. Let's be rich towards him. Father, we thank you this morning and we bless you. There's not more in any other warning. The parables are all warnings. And it's not an e a coincidence that they are all coming up at this time. Let him that have ears to hear, let him hear what you're saying to the church. Help us, Lord, to put things in their rightful place. To make the men thing the men thing. Take away pride, boasting, arrogance, putting the life into our hands. Help us to rely on you, depend on you, and to be rich towards you. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen.